I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. Yeah, that was the last time I saw him, 1987. Wow, that's 34 years. So, John, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, Lee. 34 years. Okay, yeah, I got it. Is that, is that good-looking Mr. Good-looking Roy Callender? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! My name. 34 years, I haven't seen your gorgeous face, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man, you look so good. <laughs> Well, thank you. I just, I try. That's like, I'm just telling, uh, I'm just telling John, listen, man, uh, the, uh, I look at bodybuilding as a physical preservative. Yeah. That's all. So I just try to be, I just try to be <laughs> a representative of what I yap about. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> like there say. we go. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him, man. It's a blessing to see you, man. What it's a blessing. blessing. The blessing is mine. So, so, so I guess, I guess we'll wait till John gets started so I can actually some great <laughs> stuff then, man. I don't want man, to wait. Man, so it this shit. You bring tears to my eyes, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, Lee, can you turn your phone sideways? Okay. You mean like this? Man, I can never figure yeah. that out. John. There we is go. Is it working? Yeah, that's better. Oh man, that's it didn't, it didn't work for Sean Ray. I guess this phone like you better than do Sean Ray. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let me introduce you guys. There we go. Okay. Tilt it up just a little more, Lee. Just a little more. Oops. There we go. Perfect. Right there. It's a little okay. okay. Perfect. All right, welcome back to the Bodybuilding Legends podcast, and I have two real legends with me today. First, we have the great Mr. Lee Haney, eight-time Mr. Olympia, and joining him, we have uh, one of Lee's idols growing up, the great Roy Callender, also one of the top bodybuilders in the 1970s and 80s. Welcome to the show, guys. It's a pleasure having both of you here. Well, what Best a pleasure to here, John. Thank you. To see this yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, John, it's a pleasure to be over with, I mean, one of my all-time idols. I mean, right. Mr. Roy oh, Callender, man. man. It, it don't get any better than that. <laughs> Listen, you stop stop trying to make me tear up, okay, man? Stop it. <laughs> my so, goodness. So, so Roy, let, let, let me ask you, um, you know, I, I didn't want any of the audience to miss, you know, what our conversation, so I want to make sure we captured it all. So, so Roy, how young are you now? 34 years. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. 34 years. 34 years. Years. People have been born, grown up, got married, gone to university uh, 34 years. And we are still. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what a blessing. It's, uh, it's really, really, I feel really thrilled, man. I can't, I don't know if the words can really express how I feel seeing you and having a conversation with you again. Well, well, man, you know what? I never will forget. And I recently saw, I think, where you posted. Uh, no, one of my other trainers, he's under my certification program. He posted a photo of me there in Barbados when you brought me, Shirley, my son, Joshua, down. I took that picture and posted it sideways. I am not an IT guy, but I, I posted it anyway because I was so thrilled when my wife showed me the picture. I said, no, no, this is Lee. This he was in Barbados standing next to the bar where they served the uh, the drinks. And he was with his wife. Give me that picture. I'm gonna post this. And uh <laughs> and I, I'm uh, glad you did because it brought back so many, so many fun memories. I really appreciate my time there and I never forgot it. Thank you well, for your man, hospitality. The, no, well, no, that's 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 that was a pleasure. But the, one of the guys even remembered the song you posed to. One of the young bodybuilders said, he posed to, uh, she drives me crazy. I said, oh, what? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <Hey>, man. <laughs> I forgot the posing music. I said, she's right. 
<laughs> yeah, so that, you, still, you, still, you still live in the memories of the people there. As, uh, you will never forget the reception, of course, from the time you got to the airport until the time you left. It, wow. You still live in their memory, man. It's great. Was that the last time you guys saw each other, or was it that contest in Essen in uh, 1987 that you competed in that Grand Prix? Now, that makes me a liar. When, uh, when you said to me the last time I saw him, I was referring to on stage. Okay. The last time I saw him was when I had the pleasure. I was, I was blessed and allowed to bring him to Barbados so that the rest of my country can mm. see this guy I'm always talking about. Okay. Uh, so it was 1988 or 89, I think. Okay. He, became, he, was, my, he was my guest at a Family Fitness Center in Barbados. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. So, Lee, we were, we were talking uh, a couple of weeks ago about um, our idols growing up. And I was just telling Roy, I just got a bunch of, uh, I was at my parents' house last weekend in Chicago. I grabbed a bunch of old muscle builders from like 77, <laughs> 78, 79, you know. Yeah. I know you can relate to that growing up, reading those magazines and stuff. So, oh, yeah, man. I remember seeing Roy and the Diamond Cup. Yeah, the Diamond <laughs> Cup. <laughs> he always, yeah. he always Roy, was, Roy was mass on top of mass. Before they were mass, he was already mass. Right, right. <laughs> on Valley. Lee, when, when, when you said that, a lot of people walked into my studio and repeated it to me all the time. I said, no, no, no. No, he's quite a nice guy. He's not going to say anything negative about me. He said, no, but if he can give you that compliment, Roy, you got to take it. <laughs> okay, right. well, coming That's from right. Lee, I think it, man. Great. So, Lee, growing up in uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina, um, you were a young guy reading the magazines like all of us were at one time. And the guys you looked up to was Robbie and Roy, right? Those were the two guys that you uh, were, were big idols of yours. So of course, with Arnold and Sergio as well, but those were the, the two guys from the 70s that you were looking up to. Yeah, most certainly, man. Everything that Roy and Robbie wrote, man, and I would uh, read, I would study their training techniques, sets, reps, uh, how they connected the various body parts together. I just consumed everything that right. uh, that they would write. And uh, man, their legs and their chest and I mean, everything, you know, I wanted that. Yeah. And I always <laughs> said to myself, if I can get a Roy Calendar, Robbie Robinson back and chest and side chest and, and arms, then hey, nobody can stop me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, so flattering, man. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, what did you do? I don't know if I ever asked this before. What did you do in your training to develop that mask? Because you really were a standout in the in that era. You know, I mean, as far as even like the best bodybuilders, you were you had that thickness and size that very few guys had. Like what, oh, what, yeah, what what exercise did you do in your routine? Like what what kind of training philosophy do you follow? <clears throat> John, I really don't know how to answer that question because <clears throat> I don't think that I stood out that much when I look at some of the pictures, yes. But that is not the mindset I took on stage with me. So it never really registered with me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, you will understand this. You will understand, Lee will understand as well. But I don't know how you looked at it. But I never, when people would give me a compliment, I never thought that I earned it. Hmm. Ah, well, I don't know. That was a weakness or a weakness or something I never paid much attention to or had much guidance on. Mm -hmm. um, it was, has always been a weakness. I never really thought of it that way. So when, when you say these things today, I am more mature now. I look back and say, well, how come you didn't see that role? Yeah. I remember, I remember going to Gold's World Gym one day in California, and I had gugoons on these 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 rubber slippers and shorts and a tank top, and I'm walking into the gym with a little a little uh, duffel bag slung over my shoulder. And this guy was sitting by the door and he said, Calendar, what? Oh my goodness, look at your legs, man. What have you been doing? You're amazed. Look at you, look at the veins. And I'm saying, shh, 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 shh. don't say anything, man. Be quiet. This <laughs> Arnold was sitting standing by the juice bar. He called me over. Hey Roy, come here, come here, come here, come here a minute. Come here. You are now rated the third top, the third bodybuilder on earth. Then someone gives you a compliment. You Accept it. Say thank you very much. Push your chest in the air and walk on. Don't hang your head. You're not in Canada anymore. You're in California now. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it was a rough way to teach me, but uh, you know, I, I never still, never still got with them. I'm sure Lee, I'm sure Lee is like that. Cause Lee has always been very shy, always been very reserved. He didn't think himself as the god of bodybuilding. Uh, that's what I got from him. <clears throat> Every time I talked to him, that's what I got from him. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm not a Came to Barbados, trained at my gym. And he sees, he, I said, he said, you ain't got anybody to train with me? I said, yeah. I said, you sure you want to? He said, bring anybody. Bring one of the guys. So I brought a guy, one of my helpers called Audley. And Audley trained with Lee. And he has never forgotten. He still talks about it until this day. So I did a good, I did a good for Audley, my employee. And uh, <clears throat> I did good for myself because I couldn't train with Lee at the time. I was too busy preparing, preparing for the event. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's so. So, so, Roy, I got a question now, Roy. What what did your training routine look like? What did you? How was your philosophy in the way of exercises and reps and, and sets? You know that that philosophy that that created the physique that you're so worldly known for. Uh, what a question, man! That that can only come from you. Um, I, I never really was interested in sets and reps. And I don't think you can tell me you were interested because I watched your training with Audley and you didn't come reps in our sets. You just said, you do this. You showed him how to do a few things. And I didn't hear you coming in sets and reps. I somehow had that inert intuition, if you can call it that, to feel when I have done enough and to feel what I needed to do with, say, uh, less squats, what I needed to do with that to complement it. I always thought of myself at work using a dumbbell and a barbell as my chisel and my hammer. I always thought of myself sculpting my own thing without numbers rather than I'm sculpting it. This is what I see in my mind I want to look like. And this is what I have to do to get to what I look like. What I want, this, this is how I looked at it. I don't know if I was dumb, stupid, short-sighted, but it felt good and it was working. So I said, why should I annoy myself thinking about how many sets I did? If my tempo is correct, if my if I'm not wasting much time in, this, in the gym, I think I'm doing the right thing. And automatically, I live like that. I, I, I don't know if that explanation suffices, but that's how I remember it was. I was never a guy who had to do three sets of six. Hmm. Why? Suppose that day my body wasn't going to do three sets of six. Suppose that day uh, I didn't have the rest or the psychological oomph to do the three sets of six. I always did what, and I always wanted to train, thank the heavens, and my, my body <laughs> just asked for it, and I gave it. I don't know how else to put it. It may sound confusing, but I was never bogged down in having to stay in the gym for an hour or many sets. I just wanted to do everything correctly, and I wanted to feel every rep that I did in every exercise that I did. I, yeah. Still to this day. Yeah, you were known for uh, kind of long training sessions, right, Roy? From what I remember reading in the magazines, if that was correct. Yeah, you some, were going some, to the gym for... Some are exaggerated. Okay. Um, <laughs> as it would have been in those days. Right. But some people, I have to ask them logically, do you think anyone can train for six hours? <laughs> <laughs> right. So don't let, don't let what you read, uh, okay. you know, fool you there. So see, six hours in a... No, I have a hard time doing six clients in a row. <laughs> but so Lee, you were you were uh, inspired by Roy as far as like what types of movements to do, right? You know, like the T bar rows, the barbell rows, bench presses, inclines, all that stuff, the basic compound stuff for building your physique. Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw with Roy, uh, and is the way he put his training together, the basic yeah. fundamental movements, uh, the form, the right technique. Uh, the the mind and the muscle link, you know, and Roy just talked about the importance of that. Uh, and, and, and as I gathered that as a younger bodybuilder, I somewhat adopted that. I, I not somewhat. I did 
tried my very best to adopt that same understanding mm -hmm. of how to listen to the body. And I believe in listening to the body, mm -hmm. I was able to will my body to take on the shape of a mold of a raw or a calendar, a raw mm -hmm. or either a Robbie. And the body <laughs> did what I willed it to do. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the Aurora was saying, of course, I use a, per a certain perimeter so that I didn't overtrain. I believe in stimulate, don't annihilate, yeah. which is why I never got an injury. Right. Uh -huh. Nor did Roy, nor did Robbie, uh -huh. you know, no yeah, one yeah. during that school of bodybuilding told themselves up. Oh. Yes, yes, and yes. When you compare to like the guys today, they, they, man, they are a mess at the age of 30, 40, they almost out of the game altogether. Yeah. Yeah, and he Roy is an excellent specimen, you know. Later in his years, and I mean, Roy Roy's only thirty four, but I'm sixty one, you know. <laughs> and, and I have no injuries, but that's because I mimicked or copied to the best of my ability the 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 training techniques of legends like like Roy, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot can be said for I that. Know. I just finished doing a a meet and greet at a gym here in Georgia called Madhouse Gym. Yeah, I saw when that. I, when I tell you, John, it was mad. It was mad. I've never seen a gym like this in my entire time of being a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. You're talking really? 20 leg presses, wow. 20 leg extensions, what? 20 chest machines, 20. I think that's too little. This guy searched the United States looking for Every type of equipment you can, you can, I, you can imagine. I saw wow. things I've never seen in my life. But well, getting back to conversations with the uh, the the audience that attended, the training techniques were just so off. It was mm -hmm. the most awkward. Just is there was no science behind what these guys are doing now, mm -hmm. wow. which is why they get hurt, which is why yes. they don't develop a classic physique yes. over time with the right uh, flow to the physique. They look, a lot of them look like mutant physiques. Big necks, weird blocky waist, mm -hmm. nothing really fits. And I see why, because a lot of them are internet, they go to the internet or YouTube yep. and follow some guy who never won the Creek Water USA. <laughs> and he's supposed to be a coach. Mm -hmm. whereby I'm sure wow. Roy has seen this <clears throat> forever. But I'm thankful that it was people that went before me like, like Roy who gave the right training principles to young athletes like myself coming up. And here I am today, uh, you oh. know, he healthy, look good. And I won a couple of the Olympic competitions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> hey, um, uh, uh, Lee, going on that, uh, do you think a lot of that is from the difference from the magazines compared to what we see on the internet now? I mean, do you think you learned better training techniques reading the magazines? Were you able to get? Well, more the content? magazines are not as they were years ago. Yeah, you saw like you see Roy routines on there. You saw Robbie. You saw Arnold. Uh, you know, it's just advertisement ploy now. Yeah, but I mean, you know, back some in the of day, them. You know, yeah, back, back in the day, the day was home. real. Yeah, yeah. So it's so different now. Then you got the internet with. Joe Blow is on there, you know, and he's telling you, hey, this is what you got to do. You use a few cuss words and mm -hmm. get everybody <laughs> up in that site. And then, oh, yeah, man, he got to know what he's talking about because he used God's name in vain. He got to be the man. <laughs> it's sad, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, agree with you. I, I see the same thing in the gym. I see these kids. Like, where, where are they getting their training information? You know, how, how are they learning? How I don't know. Uh, I saw on Lee's shirt. I saw on Lee's shirt, if you don't mind me saying this, John certification yeah. and I this is what I said to you I am a, I am lazy or timid or not far-sighted enough but I have only started my certification because one kid's father called me and told me his son wants to be a personal trainer and he's got his certification and stuff but he doesn't want him to go being a personal trainer unless he's coached by me he has to learn what personal training is. That is the biggest compliment I have ever received from anyone in Canada. Mm -hmm. And 
I only started with him a few weeks ago. And as soon as I started with him, everybody now wants to come and train with me. Then I saw Lee's certification. So I was thinking about starting my own. I have to do it now because this guy is doing his mentorship here. Mm -hmm. yeah. He already got certification from one of the organizations, but now he wants to learn to be a real coach, he said. And he's 19 years old and so serious and so dedicated. And now every you'll be surprised the calls I've gotten. I want to do that too. How much does it cost? I don't care how much it costs. I want to do it. So this guy's father didn't care about the price. He said, he has to come to you. If he wants me, to, if he wants to stay in my house, he wants to be a personal trainer, he has to be trained by you to be a personal trainer. And that is because someone asked me to do this, but I, I didn't have the drive or the foresight that Lee has to start my own pers personal trainer certification program. I was forced to start this because I was forced into a corner. That's the sort of, uh, I don't know, I don't know what sort of attitude to call it. I low key backstage. I take a back seat to this sort of thing attitude that I've always had. But this guy, thank heavens, has forced me to understand. You have something. You have to pass it on to these youngsters. And he yeah. said, he gave his son as an example, and it's not cheap. And he sent his son to me. What a what a what a, a blessing, a compliment. And an honor. I have to live up to all those things. Well, Roy, you're a little you're a little humble, but didn't you just win uh, trainer of the decade or something in Canada not too long ago? That's what they said. They still call it Canada <laughs> the greatest bodybuilder of all time. All those yeah. little things, but I don't I don't take them seriously, John. I like to I like to reach out and touch people and help them and uh, show them the real me if if there's, if there's such a thing. Mm -hmm. But I I, I I I take those I take those. Uh, those honors, compliments, and, and just, you know, it's, I accept them, but I don't let them, this, this old head here is too <laughs> old to get big. <laughs> you can't <And> you, load it. <laughs> and you know, John, uh, as Roar was talking about the certification, when I'm doing my workshops with the young, with the students from all over the place, mm -hmm. one of the things I always let them know that Lee Haney did not create Lee Haney by itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was people that came before Lee Haney right. that mm -hmm. gave Lee Haney information on training, nutrition, and training wow. philosophies and how to put it together. And one of those people was Mr. Roy Callender. My so my God, certification me. program is oh, based man. upon and came from, it was birthed by people like Roy and Robbie and Arnold, those who came before me. Mm -hmm. When I was establishing the certification program, I said, wait a minute now. We in the world of bodybuilding are the best at what we do. We don't guesstimate training. We don't guesstimate nutrition. We've lived. We've been there, done that. Yeah. So who are these people creating certification programs? Yeah, they may have a lot of information that they've been able to put together and package, but yep. they don't have life experience right to put together a package i had uh, several uh certified people with these uh national loan accredited uh association come to me and said well yeah i'm certified but i don't know what to do how exactly. do i put together a routine I, I never did that so that's right. where the difference comes in that we are yes. what roy's doing what i'm doing we're hands-on been there done that we know a matter of fact about what we're doing. Right. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you got a certification written on, that doesn't mean you know diddly squat. Yeah. You know, so I'm real happy to see Roy moving that direction, but I I am Roy. I am Robbie. And so when I just uh, decided to sit to do the certification program, I said, well, why shouldn't I? If these other people who are nobodies in our right. world, <laughs> nobodies in the world, see? of true training to yeah. do it, then guess what? It need to be one created by us. Right. The, the, the founding fathers of how the body works. Exactly. And how it responds to nutrition and training. Yeah. I think that's so awesome that you guys are wow. giving back to the sport by doing that, you know, and yeah. sharing all the knowledge you had and, and experience. Go ahead, Roger. Oh, what a day. What a day. <laughs> I'm getting some education myself, Lee. 
<laughs> Thank you very much, my brother. Thanks, man. What a day. What a day. <laughs> Better thank you, John. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Lee, didn't, didn't you see Roy compete in the uh, 81 Mr. Olympia? Weren't you there in the audience at that show? Oh, yeah, man. I sure was. I uh, That's the one, I think, uh, uh, Franco. Uh, Franco won that one. Right. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I, I don't agree that he should have won it. Yeah, I don't think anybody does. <laughs> you know, because he, he had just came back off an injury. Yeah, that leg. Know, so his legs wasn't there. Right. You know, there's just so many things that's controversial uh, uh, in the sport, you know. But, you know, the whole thing, when I'm working and speaking to the young people in my certification program, I say, listen, at the end of the day, you get to live your passion in bodybuilding. You get to mm. compete. You get to, you know, do all of those things. Yeah. But you also want to, if you're really compassionate and you love this, you also want to think of ways to create an economy by doing what you do. If your goal is to become a personal trainer, then become the best mm -hmm. because you can eat from this, you know, uh, and that's what I do. I've I trained attorneys. I've trained Evander Holyfield. And Evander Holyfield wanted to come from cruiserweight to heavyweight, mm -hmm. put 15 pounds on it. I used explosive ballistic style training to do that. When the owner of the Philadelphia 76 or Harold Katz called me, said, listen, Sean Bradley, which was seven foot four, we can't put any weight on it. Then he said, we got a doctor in exercise physiology. <laughs> training it and he can't get no weight on it. Said, do you think you can do that, Lee? I said, man, of course I can do it. This is what I do. Right. This is what we live. <laughs> I put 20 pounds on Sean Bradley, the first uh, 10 pounds on the first month and 10 pounds on in the second month. I put 20 total pounds on him along with his endurance and his ability to play and stay flexible. Uh, so I did, and then Shannon Sharp and Gary Sheffield and, you know, Riddick Bowe. I've worked with all of these people. So what we do in bodybuilding, we be a body. We know how nutrition work. We right. know how to change gears depending upon the functionality of that particular athlete. That's what we do. So that's <laughs> why I, what Roy's doing in the way of his certification, Roy, better late than never. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's... That's what my wife says. That's what I. That's what I'm beginning to re repeat, repeat to myself all the time. Yeah. Uh, I say it to myself all the time. I, I thank you very much, man. Um, but you were talking about John asked about the 1981 Olympia. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, people have never never stopped talking about it. But <laughs> that's the only Olympia I ever thought that I could have won. And after the Olympia, Joe Vida said to Arnold, uh, Joe Vida said to Rick Bain in the seat. This is Royce. This is Royce to win. This is Royce. God rest him. And uh, hmm. said it to Rick Wayne, and Rick Wayne has never forgotten it. And when, I, when, it, when it was all announced, um, Joe came to me and said, Roy, I'm sorry. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it up. I'll do something about it. Okay, I can't give you the title, but soon as I got back to Canada, the phone started ringing from all over the world. I want you to come here and teach. I want you to come here. And... So I made, I made up financially. Right. That job was Joe's team, spending mm. a long time in Japan and Norway and Sweden. Oh, so wow. financially, yes, he showed me his sincerity by doing that for me. Mm. But what they did at that thing, it was it was it wasn't right. It left a bitter taste in people's mouth. And even though Franco is no longer with us, people are still talking about it. Yeah. So I had I had the privilege. Lee has not had this privilege. <laughs> Lee, yeah. you have not had this privilege, my brother of being involved in two of the most, most controversial <laughs> Olympias of all time. Right. Yeah, <laughs> no. Oh, man. Roy, you had to, you had to fight tooth and nail, man. I, I wasn't <laughs> in that needed. era. <laughs> you better be needed. You have never been involved in a controversial Olympia in your life. All the Olympias, you, you kick some rear end, and you really, you really, you earned it. You had to. But when you walk up on stage, it must feel good, though. And you walk up on stage, best physics in the world and judges who don't know you have heard about you are saying no this guy deserves to win for the eighth time we deserve to win for the ninth time i'm sure if he wanted to you come back to the ninth time and won it as well but mm -hmm. that is that was not 
that was not the direction the master had for you. So, hey Roy, what did what did you think of Lee because at his first Mister Olympia win in 1984? Because you were in that contest too. <laughs> what I think of him? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I wish you had recorded it because what I'm going to say to you now might sound like, oh, Roy is only saying this, but I don't lie. So. Right. And I, when he won the 1984 Olympia, he said, uh, here comes another Arnold. Nobody's going to beat him for the next eight, nine years. No yeah. one. Yeah. And but I said, what are you talking about, Roy? Come on. He's, he's, he's won, but he's not been here for that long. I have not forgotten that. <laughs> People who told me, Roy, you've got to be kidding. I'm sure they have forgotten. But we had a big argument about it. I said, no, nobody's going to beat him for the next Eight years when he came to Barbados, I said, nobody's going to beat this guy for the next five, six years. Yeah. So come and see him. And the whole of Barbados came out to see him. Yeah. This is how much I believed in, believed in and loved this guy. Yeah. And, and yeah. Lee was the next Arnold because no one dominated the sport as much as uh, Arnold did until Lee came along. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. That's what I said. Yeah. Well, you know, man, you know, thank you for the compliment, Roy. Not I, a compliment. I, it's, the truth. it's the truth, brother. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, you know, <laughs> I attribute that to, you know, when I was 17 years old, I, yeah, I fell in love with bodybuilding. I fell in love with you as a kid. And I remember going to bed one night and I got on my knees and I prayed <laughs> and I said, I said, Lord, if you see fit to make me the best at this sport that I love so much, I'll go before the world to give you the praise and the glory. That was my prayer when I was 17 really? years old. My yes. goodness. <laughs> and I think he, I know for some reason, he saw fit. He saw that he could trust me with that gift. And man, I tell you, uh, I, 1982, I won the junior. Uh, I won the Atlantic USA here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Then I won a few months later, I won the, the junior nationals. Then a couple of months later, I won the NPC Nationals. Then a couple of weeks later, I won the IFBB World Championship, all in 1982. Right. And then in 83, I placed third in my first Olympia at a weight of 233 pounds. But I peaked, it's amazing, I peaked four weeks before at 243 pounds. And as I go back in my mind, Arnold saw me at World's Gym. I weighed 243. And he looked at me and he had this puzzled look on his face. He said, Lee, how are you looking like this four weeks out from the show? And I just shrugged my shoulder and said, I, I'm just training. I don't know why I was looking like that. And But then the day of the show, two week, four weeks later, I only weighed 233. What mm -hmm. Arnold saw, he saw me peeking. Yeah, But he didn't say, Lee, you're picking too soon. He kept it to himself because I guess he didn't want to shake my confidence in that uh, because I didn't know what I was picking or not. I didn't know. I was 20, I was 23 years old. But anyway, man, the following year, I found out what I did wrong because I dropped 10 pounds within those four weeks. Mm. And what happened? I was just, I was training like a horse and eating like a bird. So, <laughs> so the following show, man, I took my calories way up to over 4,500 to close to 5,000 calories. Wow. And he ended up going into 1984 at 243 pounds. Perfect. The same weight I walked in, in 1983. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect shape. So the good Lord answered that prayer, man. And I just try to use what I've learned and how I respect Roy and Robbie and try to impact the world uh, in a positive way with my gift of bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah. It really was a blessed career when you look back at it, Lee. I mean, the way you my rose goodness. up, you know, you won the Teenage Mr. America and then you won the yep. first nationals and then third in your Olympia and then the Olympia wins were all, I mean, there was no controversy in any of those. And then you retired on top, you know, not many guys do that. Not many, you know, most people keep pushing it, pushing it until they get beat or they look worse, you know, but you really did it perfect. Yeah, man. I, uh, I had someone to ask me, I know Sean, Sean Ray asked me in an interview that haven't, it haven't aired yet. You know, uh, he was asking me, well, Lee, did, did you plan your retirement or anything? And yeah. You know, did you and Shirley talk about it? And of course, I said, uh, 
you know, when I reached my seventh one, I had, me and Shirley had a conversation and uh, I said, well, baby, what do you think? Nobody ever did seven in a row. And she said to me, she said, you got to do eight. What's the matter with you? You got to do eight. You know, I was almost embarrassed <laughs> that I had considered not doing it. You know, Shirley's an athlete herself. Right record, yeah. Yeah, man. So she was all over me. What's the matter with you? Of course you got to do eight. So, <laughs> so anyway, that was the eighth one. And so I didn't announce my retirement at the eighth one. But I, I don't think I had to. I just knew that was it. I didn't. Yeah. I had no more desire okay. to go any further. And I felt that it was time to use my faith okay. in other directions, not to yeah. keep hammering away doing the same thing. I had conquered that particular area. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see mm -hmm. what kind of father you can be, what kind of businessman you can be, how you yeah. can use your gifts and expand upon that. It's all about mm -hmm. growing, yeah. not about standing still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was lying on you, Lee. I knew I was presumptuous. And uh, when people ask me, why, why did because I have you, I have you on my wall here in my studio in our last comparison at the 1987 Grand Prix after your 1987 win in the Olympia in Sweden the week before. And people always ask me, so why why didn't he go on to win the ninth and the tenth? I said, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm not presumptuous. So I'm speaking for you, Lee. Um, nothing. I think ill-intended. I said he saw what was coming. He saw the type of physiques that were coming down the tube, and he didn't want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. Because I said, yeah, he was right. He doesn't look like these guys who come out all puffed up. And no, 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 no. He was genuine from head to his toenails. Mm -hmm. He was genuine, and he wanted to come into the Olympia as a picture of health. That is why I that's why I must confess to you, Lee. I spoke for you <laughs> without permission. <laughs> yeah. I just said, well, that was a perfect example, coming. Roy. That was Pardon a perfect me? example. That's what that's what you look like. That's what Robbie looked like. That's what I wanted to look like. You guys were the a picture of what a true Olympian is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And Thank you. and I figured if I could look like you guys, then guess what? I can be Mr. Olympia. So you yeah, well, were my was my inspiration. Yeah. I think that's my I think that's my sound out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my stand out for another man. <laughs> Lee, I must you 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 look vibrant. There's something about you, I don't know what it is, my brother, but whatever it is, I would like to get it, or you can send me some or tell me how to get it. Your vibrance, man. Your vibrance is uh whew. <laughs> I feel uplifted now. I've spoken to you. Well, I tell you what, man. I see, I see yours, Roy. And Roy, you still haven't told me how young you are. You try to keep it as a secret. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> how young? Yeah. I told that to John. I said, John asked me that. I said, John, I'm 40 years old. I like that, man. You're not going <laughs> to let the old man catch you, are you? <laughs> so you, at least you gave John six more years than you gave me. You told me 34. <laughs> My, the piece of paper they gave me at the uh, gave my mother at the, uh, at, at the at the church says 1944. I was born. And I said it's, it's okay, but I'm 40. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like it. I love. Hey, I learned something new, man. I'm gonna <laughs> use that one, Roy. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Roy. Roy, I was all. Uh, getting ready for the uh, workshop, this uh, gym takeover that I did this past Saturday, this Madhouse gym. And so anyway, Roy, I had allowed my beard to sort of grow down here, you know? No. You know look, and I had my do-rag. I was looking all cool, but it was great. And I told my wife, no, I'm not going to show up in front of the beard with my great beard. I said, you forget that. I shake that thing off, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. We're please. not in the old people's business, man. Right. We can <laughs> stay young <laughs> business. <laughs> hey, Lee, did you? Look at John. Look at John. Look at John. Look exactly. at John. First saw the guy. He looked older than now. John is getting younger every time I see him. <laughs> that, that's what I want to see. That's what I like about bodybuilding. This is why yeah. I told John earlier before you came on. I was talking about the project I had. I think bodybuilding is not what guys look at it today, injecting oil here, injection oil there. I think bodybuilding is about longevity. Yeah. I know that Father Time is going to get me. I know he's going to he's gonna win. He always wins. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I yeah. am going to fight. 
and fight till the very end because he will respect me for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Roy, I can't, I did a book not long ago, man. It's called Fit at Any Age. And the book talks about age management exercise, age management nutrition, age management supplementation. And so on the book, I have age groups from 90 all the way down to 50 something years young. Wow. And this book, I've toured with it. I've used it uh, as uh, speaking to the corporations. You know what, Roy, I, I want to send you a copy of this book. Not like you need it. I just want to. No, 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 I, I do need it. To, I, 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 no, 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 it to you. no, no, I do need it. I just tried to turn to my wife and said to her, you have to order that copy. But now you said you're going to send it to me. God bless you, man. Um, okay. I, I, will, I, will, I will treasure it and I will use it. I'll use it big time. I can't, okay. I can't wait to see what's between the covers. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to send it to you. And I talked to them about something called functional training. Oh, boy. You know, which is, and again, it's about longevity, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's about functionality as we get older. Now, my function is not as it was when I was Mr. Olympia. I don't need that type of function. I don't Hello. need a big chest and big legs. Listen, Hello. I just want to be able to get up in the morning. I want to, I want to be able to bend down, step back up. I want to right. push a shopping cart or pick up my grandkids. So <laughs> yep. my functionality and what I need is in line with those things. And that's what my okay. exercises should should uh, exemplify. That okay. type of functionality. Okay. And that's what I talk about in the book, functional exercise for okay. the particular functionality. Yeah. yeah, yep. All pain free. Man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I keep saying. And this is why this is why I think Lee that most I was telling John earlier. This is why I think that 99.99% of my clients are corporate clients. Yeah. Um, that's right. Uh, I yeah. this is a blessing from above. I don't I don't push for, for the bodybuilder, the 20 inch arm guy, because I have not one, I don't have one client. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe one. I don't have one client who wants to have a 20 inch arm. They all want to look good in their suits. They yeah. all want to feel good uh, in their job because most of them spend sedentary, their life yeah. in sedentary positions and mm -hmm. we are aging very rapidly. So they appreciate everything I said and yeah. thank heaven they appreciate the image that I project through it. And mm -hmm. this is how I, this is how I've, I've done my thing. I didn't go in for a gym, uh, a gym as it were. I have, Maybe I'll maybe maybe God will have it so that we'll have you up here one time, Lee. It's just a studio. It's a private studio, yes. and I see one client at a time. Mm. I see one mm. client. Maybe my wife will see another client at the same thing. But there's only four of us in here. Yeah. Um, and it's not a small place, but it's. I think it's the future of training. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. people are comfortable doing it. And... Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that, and. Um do my certification program we have what is called the functional training certification and we have ultimate bodybuilding oh. functional training for the mass yes. like you said doctors yes. lawyers yes. Yes. business people CEO. then you got the other one for hardcore they want to know bench squats carb loading carb depleting very smart all of those kind very of smart. sciences you got it, two you different got it. ones yeah but yes, yes, the yes. bodybuilders they want the ones who say i want to get certified they understand that the majority of their income is going to come through ordinary people right so they go in the direction of the functional training yeah um, yep bodybuilders they know right. everything anyway which is why they own all <laughs> these these crazy things and getting hurt all the time yeah uh, they, they go to youtube and get okay. get exercise routine which is doesn't make sense right i'm so flattered that i'm so flattered that I'm, I'm thinking along the same lines as Lee Haley. I'm so flattered. <laughs> Don't say another word, brother. Please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I wanted to ask you a little bit about bodybuilding today. It, it kind of, uh, you know, now they've got classic bodybuilding and we've got the open bodybuilding. But back in your day, Roy and Lee, it was all together, right? I mean, classic bodybuilding was bodybuilding because they looked at everything. They looked at yep. the symmetry, they looked at proportions, they looked at small waist. That was all considered. And it was kind of crazy looking back at those contests because you had all types of different body types. Like, Lee, look at the first Mr. Olympia you went in. Samir Benut won it. McAway was second. You were third. Bertle Fox was in it. Frank Zane. So, I mean, 
you got all these contrasting body types, but the judges were able to look at that and say, well, you know, Zane's got the symmetry and mcway has got the posing and they were able to figure out how to judge these competitors. And now it's like, when I hear guys coming up, they're like, oh, you're classic or you're, bo- you know, you're open bodybuilding. But I kind of liked it back in the day when it was all together, right? I'm confused. So I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm, confused. I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I don't, I don't believe this anymore. I don't think when we go to the Olympics, <laughs> but you, uh, you're a short sprinter. So uh, <laughs> right. no. no. Right, right. Yeah, well, you know, like Roy was saying, it's, it's just so different now. And one thing I look at is bodybuilding went in a direction that was not, I grew up seeing, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know, I'm who I, what I saw. I saw right. Robbie, I saw Roy, I saw, um, that's what I saw. Frank Zane, that's what I saw. Right. And that was the standard. Then I think bodybuilding, you know, I won my last Olympia 254 pounds. Mm-hmm. Which people say, well, that's a mass monster, but no, it's not. I, I listen. I had a mother. Mother's five foot eleven, you know, two hundred thirty pounds. My dad, muscular, five foot eleven, you know, two twenty five, oh. you know. So right. my genetic blueprint is what it is. Right. But I had a thirty one and a half inch waist. You you see, and over the years of training quality, muscle separation. Mm-hmm. I started that early. And what I started early is what I read about and what I yes. learned early through following the right the right precepts of training. Right. And the legends like Roy. So mm-hmm. I matured very fast in muscle maturity because of the right training, right form. These guys now, they use more of a power lifting training principles they train real heavy. They train some body parts of being trained once a week, which is again in line with more power lifting mm-hmm. than the world's classic bodybuilding. So as a result, you develop these big, wide, wide, thick waist uh, physiques that's not polished or not finished. They're mm-hmm. bigger, but they're not more polished. And so when I finished up at 254 next thing you know here's condorian so they wanted something big but what they got they got big and i say that first olympia i think dorian looked best for that when it came to being a classic more of a Mm -hmm. physique right but the second one i think he picked picked up probably about 20 pounds and he started to lose the thing that that I had a, that, appealing, got, that I learned and yeah. took on the characteristics. Right. Yeah. right. I know Roy's, Roy's ready to jump in. Let, go ahead, Roy. <laughs> no, no. I, the, the, he lost that appealing look. And I think that is, I presumptuously said that this is why Lee stopped. Many people ask me, why do you think he stopped? You met him, you this, you that. I said, I think he stopped because he saw what was coming. He didn't want to go into the heavy GH loading and the oil injecting and that sort of stuff. Lee is a Christian. He's a man of God. And I don't think he would have wanted to put his, I don't think he would wanted to insult the creator of that physique. And that is why he, that is why he went, that is why he got out of bodybuilding. I did not know the real reason, but this is why I tell my clients and my, who come in here and see your picture on the wall. They come in. That's what, that's, that's what I say. I'm not. If I'm lying, I'm sorry. But that's the explanation I give. <laughs> that's, that's the truth, Roy. That's the truth, you know. And, you know, uh, where bodybuilding is now, we, we can't go backwards. Right. What's called classic physique now is really classic bodybuilding. That's, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. You know, uh, mm. but I don't like the fact that they put weight barriers on it. Well, you got to be a certain weight and a certain height. But I understand why they did that so that it would overflow uh, across over to mm-hmm. present day bodybuilding, yeah. which mm-hmm. is a whole nother look. But, you Not know, but for the guys, I like the fact that there's a place in the room for everybody now. You mm-hmm. got the physique guys who wear the, the long shorts. You know, they, they don't have that thing. <laughs> and so then you got class physique guys who are 
more of what we look like, yep. you know, uh, which is very appealing. I love plateau physique, but then you got what is called bodybuilding, which is power lifters with muscles, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that's the look that you that you get. So it's it's it's, it's different, but everybody can make money now. Uh, I'm mm. happy to see that. And uh, there's a place at the table. Yeah. So in that, is that span it in such a way that's good? I'm glad to see the classic bodybuilding, a classic physique uh, come to fruition. I just wish the, the prize money for classic physique was just as good, yeah. uh, you know, like, as it is for regular bodybuilding. Yeah. Because that's what made the sport beautiful. And that's what's keeping it beautiful. Yeah. When I see these kids on the road, man, they, they're not saying they want to look like, uh, they don't say they want to look like Ronnie or Dorian or uh, even Jay Cutler said, Lee, we want to look like you. We like you had a small waist. You had a nice yeah. taper. That's what we want to look like. Right. And I look like Roy. I look like Robbie. I look like Arnold. Right. I look like Frank Zane. Right. That's why those those old physiques from back then are still so popular today. I mean, that, that never goes away, right? That's right. You John, got John don't forget your physique. Year olds that come <laughs> to my booth saying, yeah, I want to look like that. Right, right. Hey, let's let's talk a little bit about the posing also before I let you guys go. Uh, Lee, did you see that picture on Roy's shirt there? Well, let me see that, Roy. That's a famous pose. RC3. See that famous pose there, Lee? No, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not. I don't. Not seeing it for some reason. There it is. That's there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's pretty, Roy. Oh, that's the one. Hey, Roy. That's the pose, right? right? Listen, Roy. I tried to do that pose. I couldn't do it, way, Roy. <laughs> I told him. I, I tried, man. I was like, I told one him. <laughs> all up sideways. I couldn't do it, Roy. I, I, I told him, yeah. That that's was the biggest I compliment I ever had. I couldn't do that one, Roy. I didn't have that big slab of beef hanging off my back. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, affected yeah. that. I, you know, I don't think I've seen, I haven't seen anybody me able neither. to copy that pose like Roy did. No, you know? me neither. No, no, but you, <laughs> you have never paid me a bigger compliment, man. That is, that is the biggest compliment. I told, I told people in my, because I put your picture next to mine, I said, you see this guy? Well, he did this. He did that. He's the only person that ever tried. That's the biggest comment we ever, biggest comment ever had. <laughs> biggest comment. I mean, you're talking about classic physique, John. Please don't forget your own, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank that's you, right. Man. But yeah. but, getting, but but going to that pose, I mean, that shows the great. If, when you're a great poser and you come up with those iconic poses like that, I mean, you'll be remembered forever for that pose, Roy. Right? So I mean. That's yeah. the value, I think, right, of doing a great posing routine, yeah. which yeah. a lot of these competitors, I'm sad to say, I think they're missing the they're missing the point on that. They're they're not doing they're not putting the effort into creating these great posing routines that can be remembered forever. We had to be able to pose though at that time. We had to yeah. show our athleticism. So important, right? We had to go into musical interpretation. We had to be able to demonstrate that we are not just a bunch of muscle. Right. We can bend and twist and stretch and split and all that sort of stuff. Right. While carrying this sort of muscle. So it, it kind of shut a lot of people's mouths the way we used to handle ourselves on stage because the final question would always be, well, how come they can do all that with all that muscle? Yeah, yeah. To the question of the layman. Yeah. How can they do, how can they do all that and they look so big? Must be good. Must yeah. be good. They're flexible. <laughs> it's, it, spoke, it spoke volumes for our sport. Right, right. Well, that's what the whole sport is, right? It's the not just the building of the physique, it's presenting the yep. physique, and that's where the art comes from, right? Be able yeah. to do things, yes. I mean, Lee, I'll never forget your your routine at that 84 Olympia, how you started it, and then you, you went into that pose like this with your shoulders out. <laughs> mind boggling. Mind boggling. And then you did it with a different song. And then your last one in 91, you did the same routine, right? You finished yeah, the same like you routine. Yeah. 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 You, you know, it's amazing. I looked, I was looking at the 1984 then comparing it to the 1991, yeah, I mean the maturity of positioning of the body had just. Yeah. I, I looked at it I'm like, well, how did I win 1984 posing like that, and compared to 1991? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's but it's like the artistry you perfected mm. over over years to get better and better. And yeah, you know, I remember Arnold, the 1983 Olympic when I placed third. Uh, we were back there in Germany at the after party, and Arnold came over to the table where me and Sherd were sitting. You know, we sort of sitting off a little bit, and he said, "Lee, you look great on stage." He said, "But your posing routine lacked." He said, if you're going to pose on this stage with legends, you got to take it to a whole nother level. He said, you're transitioning, although, you know, it's okay. It was good enough to win the NPC Nationals, I'll be for a championship, but he don't stay with Roy Callum, but with Roger Robinson, <laughs> Conway and Zane. Come on. Man, you, you get, they, they going to chew you up. He right. said, so look, when we get back to California, you come to my office, I'm going to introduce you to my posing coach. And once the introduction is made, she can work with you however you want to do it. And then once you get your routines down, get better at that, you will be Mr. Olympia. And that's what Arnold told me. Mm-hmm. And I got back to California from, you know, I was there in his office, I think a, a few days late after getting back and Man, there you go. She worked with me and helped me with my transitions. And I just worked my tail off with the posing. And yeah, and I just saw it get better and better from year to year. And like you were saying, that's something that they had pretty much as of the last few years just totally dropped the point system in posing. Know, it I didn't know. count for anything. Right, right. So the artistry of, of what I learned watching, you know, Roy and, and people during that era, it was being lost. You have the meatheads who go out on the stage and then they take their hands and say, come on, pose for me. Yeah. Come on, clap <laughs> right, for me. Right. You give the people something to clap for, they'll clap. Right. But they walk right. to one end of the stage, they hit one pose, then they walk to the, it looked like a, 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 a some kind of nightclub. Yeah, yeah. Quits, you never did that kind of goofy stuff, jumping down, running down in the audience. We didn't do any, that's a nightclub, brawler looking kind of a deal. Right, right, right. So the classicness of what, I learned, and that was from again from Raw in that era. It had sort of it gotten it gotten lost. I think it's trying to sort of make his way back. As I understand, they're now starting to give best posing awards. Good. I know Arnold did yeah. at his event because yeah. Sergio Olivier Jr. received that, and right. I'm glad to see that happen. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I think that's something that's really missing in the sport, and I hope that comes back. You know, because I think you know. I, I said this before on my podcast with the YouTube and stuff and everybody looking at the videos. Can you imagine if somebody created a great posting routine now? I mean, that thing would be watched a million times because people are looking for that, you know? Yeah. Well, we no Roy to do it. Roy, you think you want to do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the joke of the show. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, tell you. Hey, you don't know what the fuck. It's so crazy out there now, man. You say, well, who, who? What what criteria do we use now? You, you know what I'm saying? That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, man. All right, guys. Well, I'll, I'll wrap it up here. I can't thank you guys enough for joining me, and it was great seeing you two back together. Uh, Roy Callender and Lee Haney, thank you guys so much for joining me on the Bodybuilding Legends podcast. And, uh, Lee, you've got your, your certification program. And uh, where can people go to, to uh, get uh, information on that, Lee? Well, John, all they have to do is go to uh, IAFSCertification.com. Okay. Visit okay. the site there, and they we got contact information. We got video clips concerning what the certification looked like. The other thing that we, that we recently did, too, John, which we're getting ready to start promoting that, I created an associated member link. So you can become a member of the association now. And if you later want to become certified, you can. But through the associate, associated member link, you can still get downloads on training, nutrition, all of that okay. uh, for a fee. And yet you can still be certified with whoever you will. Or if you're just a regular, uh, regular athlete wanting information, then you can get some real knowledge there. Okay. You know, whether you're under my certification or not. So that's the associate member link. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And Roy, you, we've got something coming up with you. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And then you got your app coming up, RC3. 
So Roy and Lee, uh, you guys are both continuing the, uh, the journey of educating today's youth and the we future. Gotta pass it on. We got to pass it on, brother. We got to pass it on. Right. You got to pass it on. Exactly. Yep. You guys are doing awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me again on the Bodybuilding Legends podcast. I hope to have you guys on again in the future. It's always great talking to you guys. Thank you, John. Son, Appreciate you, brother. Roy, it was a real honor. God bless you. Hey, we're going to be you, doing man. some stuff together pretty soon, okay? Yes. Love you, man. Love you. I love you, too. Okay. God bless you. Okay. All right, guys. Bye -bye. Thank care. you, John. Thank Yo. you. All right, Roy, before I let you go, I want to talk a little bit about this big project you have coming up, which is one, which is an app, right? And we have uh, your friend Carlos Benfetto, and uh, he is helping you get this launched. So, uh, Carlos or Roy, tell us a little bit about this. How, what, what's this all about? Sure, well, I can. I can I, I, go ahead, Roy. I think, yeah. I, think, I think I should tell you first, John, that Carlos came in as a client. And... Uh, we had to fix some things, and I'm glad he trusted me to do that. I was flattered, actually. Okay. And uh, we got to talking as clients do, and why I do this and why I do that. And after about the fifth session, I didn't know he was that analytical. I, I don't know clients. I take things for granted. And then he came in one day and said to me, Roy, RC3. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> That's the name of my studio, CCC, Canada Concept Coaching. So he said, RC3, I said, no. He said, hey, you should think about it. You, uh, what you do here is uh, you're wasting your time, man. What you do, the things you've told me, the things that we do together, I, I never saw them before. And you got, you got some shit here, excuse you, see the language, you got some stuff here that we should share with the rest of the world. And I had my doubts mainly because I am not a, a technical guy. And then, I think he saw my doubts. He saw me doubting and doubting. And then before he left, he said, Roy, I'm a web developer. Mm. And that did it. I, I got confident. I realized he wasn't a con man. And I was, and then we got closer, closer. And now, uh, we're not, you know, he's not only my client, uh, where I look after his body, but uh, I am his client. <laughs> he looks after RC3. And that's where <laughs> RC3 was created. Okay. That's where it was born. So, so Carlos, this is like an app then, right? It is, it is. And just maybe to, to add a little bit to what Roy said there, it, the conversations we had were really about our frustrations, our collective frustrations. Roy would share with me, you know, I spent so much time with my clients in the studio. They get it right. They're doing it right. And then they go home for a week and do their thing and come back. And it kind of loses that continuity, that consistency. And, you know, we were talking about how can we solve that? Mm -hmm. And part of my frustration was it's great when I'm in the studio with Roy, but I wish I had Roy in my pocket. <laughs> so when I mm -hmm. went to the gym, I can make sure I could do these things the right way in the way Roy intended for me to do them. And so we started talking about the technology available there. And you're exactly right, John. It, it is an app that we're, we're kind of almost think of it like we're creating a digital Roy and a digital uh, way of representing his his coaching and his concept and that's where rc3 was kind of born and i would say like the biggest differentiator what we're doing between let's say the apps that are on the market and we looked at a lot of the apps on the market and how we can solve this this type of problem and if you look at the apps on the market today it's really about grocery lists right you have a list of exercises yeah you kind of check off the boxes and you tell them how many reps you did but nobody's really telling you if you did it right you know are you mm -hmm. risking injury are you pulling, are you doing it with the right posture? Are you doing it with the right momentum, the tempo, the technique, and really giving you that live real-time feedback? Yeah, that's true. So the approach we're taking is really about that. It's how do we take all of the, the knowledge that Roy has and that he really gives to his clients and make sure you always have that with you no matter where you are. And you don't need any proprietary equipment or any expensive equipment. The app kind of looks at you in real time and it uses vision and it uses language to really correct you while you're doing the exercise. So you're always doing it right and making oh, wow. sure you're avoiding injury. Okay. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I've seen a few apps and like you said, you're right. They, they just show you the exercises and they demonstrate the exercises So you know how to do them, but you don't know if you're doing them right. And your trainer's not there to, to correct you. Exactly. Exactly. And so we're really leveraging the latest technology and artificial intelligence and you're going to hear a lot of apps that say they use artificial intelligence and it's more behind the scenes. 
we're really taking this real time, hyper personalized approach where, you know, the way I do a curl or the way I do a leg extension is not exactly the way somebody else should do it. I might have an injury, I might have a weakness that I'm adapting for. And all of this knowledge and all of this technique and all of this hyper personalization, that's what we're really putting in this app. And it makes sure that you're doing it the right way for every rep and every set. So how does that work, Carlos? How do they know that Roy's there? Uh, you know, how is Roy there to, to correct everybody? Yeah. So, so what we do is, uh, you know, how, do, how does Roy help everybody is we really take all of Roy's techniques and we train our artificial intelligence to think and to look for the things that Roy is looking for. So uh, hmm. we, we really draw out your skeletal system. We got all of your joints. We look at how fast they're moving. If you're doing the right holds, we look at your fingers. We look at how you're holding the equipment. All of it is in real time. And we use computer vision, which is an, an, a technology in artificial intelligence to really assess that in real time and provide the feedback. And that feedback is visual and audio. It'll actually be speaking to you telling you to correct your elbow or correct your arm to slow down the pace and you see it on screen as well so you always have this visual feedback so you can know what you need to correct and how you can correct it wow so if a guy's doing um hack squats and he's yep. going too fast this artificial intelligence will see that and will say slow down slow down the descent or whatever exactly exactly or hold a certain you know position when you're at the bottom if you're doing a different tempo and i'll actually show you your joints and how you're holding your posture and how you're holding the the equipment and make sure that it's level that your legs are at the right angle that your hips are, are you know stable and that your shoulders are at the right position all of this is always continuous in real time so you always have the feedback that you need while you're doing the exercise and you don't have to wait that week when you go see your trainer again. Wow, that's that's crazy. I never heard of that before. Yeah. So, so Roy, you were kind of uh, hesitant about doing something like this, right? Because like you said, you're not into that online stuff. You want to be there. You want to train your clients one on one. That's that's the way you will spend with your personal training, right? Yes, but that is how that is. I think that is how Carlos got interested because I wouldn't even let him breathe too hard unless it was correct. <laughs> and everything has to be correct. If, if I try to do the same thing, John, look at it this way. Can you imagine you, well, you know, you know how really great it feels when you can train and you're never injured mm -hmm. and you hear everybody's complaining and, you, and you're, you're, you're really enjoying it. It's, it's a real, I, I'm getting carried away with my emotions. It's a real joy when you work out and you feel great and you don't have to go home and tell your wife or your girlfriend, I hurt my back in the gym today. You shouldn't hurt your back in the gym. People come to the gym to be healed. People yeah. exercise to be healed, not to be injured. We, we are not rugby players. We are, we are right. you know, we are not super athletes. We are not doing basketball. We're not, we are, we are trying to preserve this is why this how I see bodybuilding because it has evolved into something else recently. But for me, bodybuilding is body protection. Body, it is prolonging the living process. It is anti-aging. It is age fighting. It is physical diminishing fighting. I, we fight against the normal process. Father time is going to get us anyway. Yeah. But right, I'm going right. to put up a hell of a fight before he, right, before right. He, before he gets here. And uh, I intend to preserve this one thing that we have. Right. Preserve it, make it look good, make it feel good, and make it function as long as we can in the right way, as long as possible. Okay. I, this is what I think bodybuilding is. I think this is how the old school, if I may say that word, used to look at bodybuilding. That includes yeah. you. Right. Right. <laughs> this is how I see bodybuilding. I think. I, I, I hesitate to use the word bodybuilding now from most of my clients because, like I said, 99.99% of my clients are all corporate. Okay. So a guy is not going to want a 21-inch arm to fit in a little 10-inch suit. So he just wants to look and feel good and feel stronger. Guy who's always sitting, as we know, sitting is right. aging factors. He's sitting. He wants to function. And this is, why, this is where I come in. And he wants to function without injury. And this is what wins, this is what has won all of my corporate clients over. They realize, hey, you're not like the trainer in the gym. I said, I'm not. <laughs> I thought you saw, thought you saw that on the door. We are a private facility. And my job is to make sure you feel good about your training. You feel safe. I teach something that you can 
go home and think about this is the function of this, what bodybuilding is. Right. Yes, you see me there, you see me there on the wall with the 20 inch arm, but that's the competitive aspect of our sport. Yeah. It's also part of our sport, which is more generalized, general population. I think everybody should do bodybuilding. Everyone yeah. should do bodybuilding. We just would have to paint the image out, which is impossible, because there's not one corporate guy I know who would like to look like the current Mr. Olympia. No insult intended. Mm -hmm. It's just, no, I don't want to diminish anybody's accomplishments. Right? But I have not met so far in my career one corporate guy who wants to have a 24 inch arm. Yeah. I don't. So this is the this is the market that our app is going to attack. Okay. To procure the tool. That, that huge, that huge lost market yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. So, Carlos, how does this work now? Does Roy set up uh, a training program for each individual and then the app is developed? around that? Yeah, that, that's kind of the way you can see it. So it really starts with that first assessment. So every client that uses the app gets time with Roy. And that's really important for, for us. Okay. It's really important for the client as well. And you know, Roy will go through his assessment and it'll, Roy will tell RC3 exactly what the weaknesses are, what he thinks needs to be worked on and kind of have that really personalized uh, program for the client. But then it goes to the actual exercises themselves. How do we make sure that, you know, that person is doing the squat they, they need to do to, to help them? And how do we make sure that they're doing, you know, a, a, a curl that's, that's appropriate for them and, and really personalizing it down to that level. And then that interaction between Roy, the client and the app then continues once the client starts using the app and they can always be sure that they're getting the feedback exactly the way Roy would. So they install the app on their phone and it's a really hands-free experience. You don't need to hold on to your phone. You don't need to check it out while you know, you're doing your rep and, and really break uh, your, your concentration. The way we've kind of designed it is you kind of drop your phone there, you place it and you kind of forget about it. And it's just watching, monitoring, providing live feedback as, as, while you're working out. So it's a real hands-free, frictionless experience. And you kind of download the app and get going. Hmm. So forgive my uh, stupid questions, but how does the how does the phone watch the first? <laughs> you don't ask stupid questions, John. No, you don't. Hold on. So so part of the the innovation in this is we're actually going to have this little uh, kind of tripod that you can put the phone on that also okay. is powered by AI. And one of the, the 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 nuts that we cracked from a technology perspective is always making sure that that person is in frame. And we have this tracking system that recognizes you as the client. So it'll say, hey, John, you know, you want to start your workout? You'll say, yeah, let's get into it. And it'll start tracking you around your gym or around your home and following you as you move from station to station or from area to area, always making sure that you're in focus and that, you, that RC3 can see you. So you kind of set that up, put it where, you know, at a, at a specific spot in your home or in your gym, and it just becomes your really your, your coach that's next to you while you're working out. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. I never, I never yeah. heard of an app like that before. It no? is pretty unique, yeah. Roy, do you do nutrition too, or is it just basically the training with this app? Well, I, I, I like to stick to things that I'm an expert. I, okay. <laughs> I don't think I'll sit down backseat to anybody, maybe you, but I don't think I'll take a backseat to anybody when it comes to physical exercise. Right. Especially with weights. Nutrition, yes, I do give tips. When I was training uh, my, my, ladies, um, my ladies for competition, yes, I guide them nutritionally. But I'm not a nutrition expert. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to prepare myself for that at all. Like, like you, I think you may know a little bit more about nutrition than I do. But what I do, I took what I learned as a bodybuilder. Not played with it, but understood what I was doing nutritionally. And I can help somebody else based on that knowledge and experience, um, especially especially females. It was very, very easy to do, but I'm yeah. not a nutrition expert at all. Okay. Okay. So when, when somebody starts this, is it just a monthly fee, Carlos? How does that work? How do apps work? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to have a bunch of different ways that people can try the app. We're going to have uh, something coming up that's going to be called the RCP Challenge. So we know that one of the things that Roy did during his career was that famous pose and we're going to allow uh, people to download the app just to try the pose themselves and enter into contests. So that'll be coming up through the year. We're going to be able to have these virtual tune-up centers. 
So if you want to go on our website at any time, you'll be able to go on and just pick an exercise that you've done, record yourself, upload it to our website, and it'll be like RC3 is analyzing you with the app, and it'll give you some, some feedback on how you're doing the exercise, provide you some analysis so you can correct some things. So we'll have that set up. Uh, but ultimately, you'll download the app uh, in Q1 2022. So we're, we're aiming for a January launch where you'll be able to download the app. But up until then, we're going to have a bunch of different ways that people can try. We're going to have contests and some of some fun events like the RCP challenge. So you said they're going to do the, the Roy calendar pose, the one that's on a shirt. <laughs> that's right. So we're, we'll be looking for you, John, to try that one. Absolutely. All right, I'll, I'll have to get in shape for that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use a little Photoshop on mine. <laughs> I, I don't know. No, John, Carlos, you must know John, man. But I, I think John can do it. I was flattered with that. Roy Calendar Pose thing that flattered almost to tears when our next guest, Lehini, he called me and told me, Roy, I wanted to call you to get permission to try your pose, but right. I tried it. <laughs> that was so <laughs> flattering, man. <laughs> Lehini, but it's, those are some of the things I remember about it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's a great idea. I can't wait to see the pictures on that. <laughs> I can I. That's, that's oh. Carlos' uh, ingenuity. I didn't, didn't think of anything like that. Yeah. So Carlos said, you said uh, January of next year, it'll be launched completely, but it'll be kind of available a little before that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have the, the, the tune up center where people can try out their, their own exercises and really give, give RC3 a run for its money there in about September. We're going to have the RCP okay. challenge in October and we'll have different okay. events where people can try it out, but you can always follow us on, on RC3.app on our Instagram account, stay up to, up to date on what's coming and some of the innovation that we're coming out there and on our website, which is rc3.app as well. Uh, and so we'll, we'll be sharing a lot of these great events coming up, but we have some fun stuff planned for, for the community, for, for the clients and for the Roy calendar fans out there. Okay. So rc3.app is the place to go. That's the place to go. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to check it out and get working on my Roy calendar post. <laughs> <laughs> You let me, we, we like your critique more than anything else, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, coming, coming from you, John, yes. <laughs> well, you know, my age, Roy, it's just going to be hard getting into that pose with my, you know, the court <laughs> thing. Like, no, yeah. I just told you, it's nothing to do with age, man. Come on. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You're living proof of that, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, Carlos. Well, thank you for joining us on the show, and uh, thanks for telling us about that. I'll keep uh, our, my viewers uh, up to date on it as we go along and, you know, let them know when the right calendar pose is ready to go and all the other things where they could try the exercises. But thank uh, you so much, John. And, and really thank you for having us on and, and letting us uh, talk about this project. We're excited, but I mean, being on, on your podcast is something special. So, so thank you oh, for yeah. that. Absolutely. My pleasure. Great. And, uh, it sounds Great. like it's going to be really sounding groundbreaking as far as the AI goes. And I've never heard of any of these innovations. So, uh, good luck to you guys on both of that. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. All right. Thanks, Carlos. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, John. Really sincerely. All right. Take care.